Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So, great week at Pebble. Yeah, very good to watch. Great uh, great victory. Um, I think down the stretch, everyone thought probably Kepka was going to sneak through and get it done again. It did look like that was going to um, happen. But uh, big, big uh, congrats to Gary Woodland. That was a, was a phenomenal win for him. That was awesome. Um, yeah, really I think good. I was maybe in the minority. And, and Gary's a really nice guy, but and, and most people know he's a nice guy, but everyone I think was kind of pulling a little bit for the Kepka story. Just because it was such a crazy historical thing that could have happened. Yeah. But. So I was I was in the minority in my household anyway. Is that uh, right? Pulling, yeah, yeah. pulling hard for, for Gary to get that done. And he was clutch. Uh, you know, I think what we really saw, especially in that back nine, was him learning from previous experiences yep. where he had maybe got himself into a position and, and maybe played too safe. It sounded like that even with the little caddy chats back and forth they recorded, they were trying to play to win this yeah. time. And I think before he was trying to hang on and not lose. That's right. So yep. the mindset was, it obviously worked a lot better for him. Definitely, definitely. No, he was, he, he when he had an opportunity, he took it. Yep. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that, you know, a little bit yeah, later in this shot, episode, because right? we're going to dive into what we felt was, you know, the key shot and which was really where he took the tournament by the scruff of the neck. And yep. there was certain times in that back nine where Kepka would put himself in a good position and, and maybe Gary would hit, you know, a slightly off shot and there'd be a chance for a two shot swing Absolutely. a bunch of the way. So, you know, uh, Gary was at 12, Kepka was at 10 and it looked like they could both get Can to 11 very, yep. very quickly. So. Um, there was, was, was a key shot in that, uh, in that par five in the back nine that we thought was, was really interesting. But mm -hmm. before we do that, we're going to dive into Gary's bag a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting bag. You had a, a really unique opportunity to work with him a couple of years yeah, ago yeah, on yeah. his driver. That's right. So he was coming off the back of playing uh, the British Open at Royal Birkdale. Mm. Um, obviously blowing like hell as it always does over there. It's funny, you can kind of come away from these tournaments and, and it can kind of mess with you a little bit. And, and you know, he was... He was complaining when I saw him uh, the Tuesday of the Canadian Open at Glen Abbey. He was, I was saying, so what was going on? And he was saying, I'm kind of spinning my driver and just not really optimised mm -hmm. my driver. And clearly distance is a weapon for him. It would be, yeah. Right, so it's not like when he's he's spinning it, he's short, but he's just not, he doesn't have, we always talk about the superpower. Yeah. You know, that is a superpower for him because he's one of the true genuine 180 to 184 ball, mile an hour ball, ball speed. speed guys. Yeah. Um, you know, so he doesn't want to give that back up against no. the, the, the kind of medium hitters in the field and, and let them kind of sneak up on For him. Sure. So, um, yeah, we was able to do some work with him. Um, at the time, he was playing a tailor-made uh, M1 head, mm -hmm. playing it at, uh, we're playing it at the time, nine and a half a little bit open. Right. Um, so he had been working with a Fujikura Atmos black shaft played at 45 and a half inches, which was kind of something he maybe wanted to try some shorter right. uh, shorter shafts. So we tested a bunch of things and, and you know, with the great support we had at that tournament from the, the guys at Accra, mm -hmm. they built up a bunch of prototypes for him. Is that they right? built up some Tours e Extreme, they built up some uh, some RPG, which was at the time was just a prototype shaft. Oh, it wasn't uh, even out no, yet? No, so the, oh, okay. the, the, the red RPG was out, yep. which was the slightly more tip soft version. But they had developed a, a blue RPG, as the one he plays now that you guys will see yep. is, is kind of blue and silver. They had developed that one for Ryan Palmer. Mm. So um, obviously Palmer being a really kind of, again, similar kind of numbers to Gary, to be honest, about yeah, one, 180 ball speed, guy, yeah. uh, plays the cut as does Gary, and uh, trying to kind of flatten out that ball flight a little bit and uh, keep it down. So they, they built one of those up for him, kind of the 75 gram version. M5 Plus, which is basically means it's it's kind of almost double X or two X. Super, super stiff. Yeah, it's really, really stout. Built it at 44 and three quarters, I think, was the the ended up finished length. Yep. Um, added some headway in, and, and it was it was a, a significant change. I want to say there was there was a pickup of, like he picked up about 26 yards. Uh, yeah, at, at the range. We've got some numbers actually. So t tell me what the ball fight looked like before, because it was kind of, you said he was hitting a fade, but too much of a fade? Yeah, he was kind of hitting this this kind of wipe out. He was kind of hitting a bit of a steep cut. Okay, um, now, coming down. Yeah, he was, he was, he was kind of hitting the ball right at the bottom of the swing. So he was, he was maybe like zero, one degree up. Mm. And he was kind of leaving the face a little bit open and healing it. So oh, okay. he was spinning it around 3,500. It's a ton. Tons. Tons. Yeah, and yeah. we can see that. You know, you guys obviously follow the channel enough to know what we were looking for for driver numbers. And that's that's not where the, one of the best players in the world wants to no. be at all. No. So we kind of had a brief conversation. It was really interesting because, you know, one of the first things I said to him, I said, how well do you know uh, your numbers? Yeah. And he was working with uh, with Butch Harmon at the time. Okay. And I said, I have no idea. 
Really? He said, uh, I said, do you know your angle attack? And he's like, I have no idea. Really? Um, and it was obviously, you know, because Butch, Butch is, will verbalize the things that other teachers will get on track, man. But, but Butch has just done it for long he's enough. He's just watching the ball. He just, he knows all these things, but, um, you know, he doesn't have to kind of compute into numbers. So he actually wasn't that aware of delivery parameters of where we would want him and this and that. So we kind of had a brief conversation about trying to get a little bit more up on the golf ball. Yeah. We were going to open the head to get the loft down a little bit and try and sort of squeeze that spin loft window. Obviously try to pay attention to strike. And it kind of rounded into a bit of a perfect storm where, mm -hmm. where he kind of got his perfect ball flight out of it, which was a little bit of a pull cut. And uh, he, he raised his launch angle to about 12 and a half, 13, lowered the spin to 2100. And it was That's just, a ton of spin. It was, it was a big difference. So he was, was wasting 20 plus yards, basically. 25 yards. Yeah. And uh, he went on to play great that tournament. Uh, he finished third, he finished one shot behind uh, Johnny Vegas. And there was yeah, a yeah. playoff, in fact. It was Johnny Vegas, I forget who else he was playing in the playoff. So he was one shot out of the playoff? He was one shot out of the playoff. He missed a six footer for Eagle at the last to get into the playoff. Crazy. And we, we, walked, uh, we walked the tournament with him and then that last day he had it so good. But that's really cool. It was, uh, it was fun, so nice to see. He's obviously in a new head now. Well, I was just gonna say, that's really cool that that shaft is yeah, still playing. It won the US him. Open and you'll have that kind of, that story from it. It's yeah, cool. well, the, the guys at Acre, I'm sure, have built up multiple editions. I would you know, be curious to find out what you know, how, how similar that G410 mm. setup is to what he was playing back then. He seems to love that head. G410 in his bag. Yep. Um, nine degree head turned down to seven. Cool. Um, so he's got that turned all the way down. Yep. Um, three with G410 LST. Yep. That You've got right one here. built up right there. Yep. So he's got that turned down to 13.5. He's got the Acra Tours Extreme uh, 4100 in there which is a really heavy, is it? uh, he it's so heavy, it's like a 100 gram super tip stiff fairway wood shaft. So yeah. for him, if he, if he probably feels like he's, you know, either the driver just goes too long and he can't fit it in the hole, or he just wants to kind of find a fairway, that's such it's a good super stable for him. For him. Yeah, and that's, that's one we're gonna go back on because that's the shot we're gonna recreate. That's the it? shot, yeah. That's the one. So interesting, uh, this year he changed to the, to the Wilson uh, FG Tour blades. It's a big story. I mean, it's such a good looking club and I think Anyone who likes Wilson or even uh, anyone who likes blades in general yeah. looked at those and went, wow, they did a really good job with those. I mean, so he, his is actually called the, the staff model, which is, uh, I mean, you can see interesting things when you look at the design, obviously the way this kind of little milling is in the back and you, out to the you know, toe. out to the toe. So we see that in so many heads, whether, it's popular whether now, it be Srixen or yeah. Mizuno do it. Obviously relocating CG uh, through the mass, moving that more toe side, that uh, increases the MOI, stabilizes the head, improves a little bit of ball speed, things like that. So, um, I mean, it's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous. That's so nice. Really, really uh, classy looking iron. So he was playing that in a three iron on Saturday and Sunday? He that was changed, his driving yeah. iron? So they, they, he had a Wilson prototype driving iron in there for the first two rounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe just something about it. He maybe just found that he didn't quite kind of, you know, it wasn't the course to quite fit that in. Yeah. Switched out for the three iron and the blade just, set. It's nuts to me. Like he was hitting under pressure a butter knife with whatever, 20 degrees of loft, perfect little stingers in the yeah. fairway. That takes some, takes some serious It really striking. does. It, it really, really does. So in that set, he plays the KBS 130. Yeah, uh, it's funny C seeing tapers. a lot of comments saying like, oh, how come he's playing graphite? But oh, it, it, really? they, they look like graphite, yeah. they do. I thought his, I thought the driving iron was graphite, yeah. but then I, when I saw that they were That's the right. black uh, C-taper. Yeah, now he loves that brushed, uh, brushed steel black, cool. uh, the kind of satin black uh, KBS C-taper 130. Mm. Uh, yeah, he hits it so hard. Yeah. Um, That's the shaft for guys that just hammer the ball. It, it really is. I, I mean, if you're if you're looking to really kind of tighten dispersion mm. and, and you've got tons of speed, it, it's the go-to. It really is. That between that and kind of Project X 7.0. Yeah, yeah. Um, both of those are are for that type of guy. Um, wedges. Uh, yep. He is in uh, SM sevens. Okay. He's got a 53 and a 58 uh, oh, okay. in the SM sevens. Different. And then he has a high toe 64. Yeah, so I mean, speaking of shots of the tournament, that shot was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, probably the three will catch the highlight reel, but for me, the, the quality involved in hitting that low, low launch, high spin pitch yep. off of basically the green, while your hands it was are just, while your, I mean, no, they must have been. He hit a shot that he obviously was a nightmare. I mean, it was on the green, let's be honest, but he, the way he dropped his club, you're like, he's probably thinking, oh God, like that's the last thing I want to do. Yeah. So now you're walking up, your you know, demons are going, oh, am I going to give up a shot here? Well, that was one of those times where you look at that and go, that's a three putt. Yeah, well, All it, day long, it's a bogey. A you think it's, it's a bogey. bogey. Yeah, and, and then Kepka Brooks is going to make birdie. Pipes three wood off 18. 
and he's got minute. he's got a complete green light in there. He's got iron in there, you know, three iron, which he, he was kind of between three and four. He probably could have done maybe being at you know ten yards further back, and he would have been perfect. He would have been perfect. But that was the that was the the two shot swing. It's crazy. Yeah, maybe, the par and the par. Three shot swing if, if Brooks makes eagle down there for sure. Um, but the, that pitch with that sixty four degree high oh, toe was obscene. Did you see the slow mo? I it loved down? it. Just that it's strike so nice. and the way you saw him use the bounce and no divot. None. Just, so nice. just he could not have struck that better. He said he thought he'd hold it. It looked like he was going to yeah. hold it. He really yeah. did. I mean, he's flown it to the top of that ridge. I mean, you see the the bounce it gets forward, and then it just jams the brakes on, and it trickles past the hole at the most perfect speed. Would have been amazing to know what the spin number on yeah. that was. Uh, it was I, pretty I mean, crazy. I absolutely loved that. So he was um, he was in KBS High Rev 125X shafts in the wedges. Okay. A little soft. So again, for the yeah, uh, something, feel and such. That's it. So a little, little bit of a change of, uh, you know, change of feel for for him in yep. that one. Pro V1 um, ball. Pro V1 golf ball. He plays a Newport Scotty uh, prototype version that just you know really suits him. Um, so that's that's kind of his standard well, it's setup. It's a cool bag. Yeah, cool different like yeah. multi-brand bag, right? We're recreating. Yeah, the shot. The shot. So we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go head out to one of the holes here at Pebble. Yeah. So 14th hole, par five. So we have placed you uh, right center of the 14th fairway. Yeah. yeah. He's hit a lovely cut. And now a tough one because you can see how much that fairway sloped away. I mean, Tiger, Rory, those guys were having a nightmare trying to hit uh, into true. that fairway. They were Very kind true. of. They were all hitting into the left rough, laying it up, uh, and then you could see kind of. Phil liked it a bit more. He could kind of draw it up the hole. True. Kepka liked the shot shape because he hits the bullet fade, and obviously, uh, yeah, it's perfect when, for Woodland. When Gary hit that one, it was just it was it was perfect. So so we had two sixty three way uphill. But that's the challenge there. It's so kind of uphill. And I was looking at the time going two sixty three. He's he's kind of try to step in a three wood. I'm like, yeah. he, hits, he hits three wood. Yeah, because you know how far he hits. Well, it. He hits three wood like two eighty five, two ninety on the fly. Yep. But 13 yards in the air is... It's is 56 no Fahrenheit outside as well, right? So, he uses one of our favourite fairway woods, the yes. G410 LST. We absolutely love that thing uh, for you. I think that could uh, maybe Still one might. day end up in your bag along mm -hmm. with an LST driver. <laughs> A whole lot of ping. Hello, ping. So, let's, uh, let's see if we can kind of recreate that now. He did hit a, a little draw into this one, didn't he? And that was his, not his kind of normal customer No, shape. I don't think he was expect. It, it didn't turn over much. Yeah. It, it just barely kind of fell left. Right. He actually landed well, it. It fell, it fell just yeah, a little left. Just a pin, little bit left. And ended up with that with kind of short chip that he hit yeah, and, and I, made the putt. I would imagine if you were watching it, it would have base lift it been pretty straight with that just it would a have, shade It would have just barely it. fell left. Yeah. Okay. So he was, he was definitely hitting kind of a, it looked low on TV, but mm -hmm. it, I'm sure it wasn't because so far uphill, isn't it? That's what it is. You know, if you look at, you know, the, the difference, that elevation, I mean, he's, he's what's he, 39 feet uphill. Yeah. So he's going to fly that thing at 100, you know, 120 feet in order to try and get some kind of stop and power. That's right. And he, and he did. I mean, he, he did. He, it kind of hit the front edge yeah. of the green, kind of popped up. And, and kind of stunned it a little bit. And then it kind of chased and just trickled through. So let's see how long this takes me to do. Have you got that in the locker? I have no idea. I have no idea. If you do. I we'll, mean, you, you know we'll, my you know my three wood game isn't exactly the strongest part of the old. We'll get your own uh, U.S. Open trophy, Matty. <laughs> We're not getting your winner's check, but we can get you <laughs> we can get you a trophy. Give me a decimal point on it. Okay, so I'll try to hit it relatively straight perfect. to be diplomatic. Perfect, perfect. God knows I can't hit a fade, so this should be good. I mean, that's actually not the, the pin should be on the left. For, he's uh, he's honestly looking at that, thinking if I do that, I'm in great shape. Yeah, you leaving in the bunker is okay, right? Fairly fluffy lie. I can get that 64 degree wedge of mine on it and yep. uh, pop that pop that on up there. So that wasn't a bad attempt. I pretty uh, good. I mean, if we look at that little flag, uh, yeah. sorry, that little tree. Yeah. I think if you hit it kind of over that tree, you know, so he's hit the little draw. If you hit it over that tree and just hit Let the it. exact same shape. Yeah. Oh, go. That is oh. so close. Oh. Oh, that's a Tell you what, that might have hit a stick. <laughs> that's not exactly what he did. Pretty good attempt, though. Pretty good attempt. 
I think that kind of, to be fair, more landed in the bunker than anything else. If you can see if you can just float one in and, and aim a little more right. You think so, eh? I, I think, yeah, I would. Just, I think if you them? start at where the flag is today yeah. and, and just drift one in, I think that's the money one. That flew 278 normalized. Wow. And that barely went, what, 258? Yeah. So he probably hit that like 285 normally. I, I think, well, he went after it. So it's yeah, 285, it. 290 for sure because he's, he's flown it up onto the front edge. Yeah. And it was cold. It was cold. I mean, that's, that's the thing. The ball's not flying anywhere. No, it was cold. Okay. I don't know how much better I can hit it than that. Hit yeah, that little front one. edge. Okay, that's as close as we're going to get. That's his kind of yeah. popped up and went left, but that's pretty close. That's a pretty darn good attempt at so it. So what's that number? I'll tell you. That was 284 normalized. So without the uphill, it would have gone 284 in the air. That's crazy. Let's look at that again. So lovely. I mean, he's had a draw. You've had a draw. That's yeah, it's pretty close. Like, yeah. But he's, he's had a fraction shorter than you. Uh, and he's just kind of got, he's got a little there. bit of a softener off of the, the, the first, uh, or the rough, not even the first cut. I'm sure he, he spun his a little more. That f I think that was a little bit of a low spinner, yeah, so he probably got a little can, bit more height on it. He can spin it a fair bit on those, uh, those fairways. He kind of hits down on it a little bit, and he can kind of get that real rise in flight out of it. Love, I'd love to have that. <laughs> he left himself sort of 18 feet or so off to the side, makes an easy chip up to three foot two inches. Yeah, makes the putt. No brainer putt. Gives himself that three shot cushion yeah. into a stretch where he can hit iron off 15 and 16. Yeah. He hits Stinger off both of them. Just, just hit kind of nice knuckleball uh, iron off there. Obviously 17 we talked about and then 18 he played. I, I said to the boys uh, I was watching with, I said, watch this, four iron, eight iron, nine iron, two putts, he's out. Yeah, that's pretty much what that's he did. That's basically exactly what he did. Within he, a club. I, I think, I, I don't, I'm not sure what he hit off the tee, but I think mm. it was pretty much eight iron, nine iron in. Yeah. And then uh, obviously made that perfect. I'm putt. glad he made that putt. That was, I was cool. as well. You've yeah. got to put that exclamation mark on it. He deserved it. It feels so much better than, than two putting. He, it just gave him the moment, didn't it? That did. was his moment, um, which was just phenomenal. So it, his dad was there, Father's Day. We you know, always love that story about the US yeah, Open final nice. day. It's great. great. Yeah. All right. I loved it. Well worth bringing the, the wine the bag back for this one. Just for today. Just for today. <laughs> Excellent. All right, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the US Open as much as we did. We'll be back next week and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.